God bless you, my brothers and sisters, this morning. Good morning. What a beautiful morning we have. Even though we don't have the sun out there just yet, but um, we have been enjoying those days lately, haven't we? Yes. But we thank the Lord for His mercy this morning and um, just for the beautiful day that we have today. So let us welcome announcements. If anyone has an announcement this morning. We have gardening tomorrow from 10 to 12, but the rain sounds horrible, so Cindy and I are debating and we'll check the weather and we may have to postpone. Okay. Any other announcements? I have an announcement. The uh, First Congregational Church is, is celebrating our veterans this year with a concert at the Canal Gazebo. It'll be June 22nd from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And there'll be a variety of people there. Even there'll even be a food truck. So again, it's June 22nd at 5 p.m. A concert to celebrate our veterans. And there's a poster out here on the board. Anyone else? No? So let us prepare to bring in the um, light of Christ.
The first reading is from Psalm 29. The voice of the Lord in the storm. Praise the Lord, you heavenly beings. Praise his glory and power. Praise the Lord's glorious name. Bow down before the Holy One when he appears. The voice of the Lord is heard on the seas. The glorious God thunders, and his voice echoes over the ocean. The voice of the Lord is heard in all its might and majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, even the cedars of Lebanon. He makes the mountains of Lebanon jump like calves, and makes Mount Hermon leap like a young bull. The voice of the Lord makes the lightning flash. His voice makes the desert shake. He shakes the desert of Kadesh. The Lord's voice shakes the oaks and strips the leaves from the trees, while everyone in his temple shouts, Glory to God. The Lord rules over the deep waters. He rules his king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people and blesses them with peace. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in the call to worship that's printed in your bulletin. God, sometimes we show up to worship ready to encounter your presence. We know you are always with us. Sometimes we catch glimpses of you at home, work, or school, in a smile, in a gentle breeze, in the joy of being together. We know you are always with us. But God, we hesitate to encounter you in all of your glory, afraid to be overwhelmed by your love and holiness. And yet we know you are always with us. Ready our hearts today to encounter more of your glory, your love, holiness, and glory that is always present with us. We come today to enter the dance of the all-consuming presence of our Trinity, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer song this morning is O Worship the King, number 73.
invite you now to join me in the prayer for the day that's printed in your bulletin. Let us pray together. God, our loving God, you are the surprise from whom all discoveries grow, the delight of whom each victory sings, the joy to whom all lasting pleasures flow, the search out of whom all science springs, the truth who surfaces when all seems lost, the love who will not count the cost, creating God high beyond our understanding. We worship your mystery, redeeming God deep beyond our deserving. We worship your mystery. Inspiring God, near beyond our peace and evening, we worship your mystery. Amen. And again we say, Amen. Sorry, to do a little interruption here. 
you get inspired while you're reading and you forget to put it into. Uh, but Isaiah chapter 6, 1 through 8, I'm reading the NIV version. And the word of the Lord says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings, with two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cry, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. I find this word so powerful. Um, I love to hear about angels only when I pray and I ask the Lord to command them to protect us. But I honestly do want to see an angel, <laughs> especially the ones with all those eyes on them. Yeah. Um, but uh, angels have, they were created to do what the Lord created them to do, which is to protect um, us humans as much as they can. Um, and usually he's protecting those that really believe in the Lord and are his servants. And there are times, especially if you have a calling from the Lord and a purpose, the Lord will protect you when you're, um, when you're a child, when you're an adolescent, while parents are praying to. But anyways, the theme of the Lord, here I am, Lord, we've heard this like many, many times. Many times the Lord is calling us to do something specific. He's got a, a task or a purpose for us. We hear this all the time. But, you know, every time you read this, you can have a different and a new perspective on this um, scripture. So the scripture is filled with men and women who accepted the call and purpose. I will say that according to the scripture, it is a process. Abraham, Moses, Joshua, the prophets, the judges of Israel, the disciples, the women that served in the ministries during the time of Jesus and after, also Jesus Christ himself, they all went through this process for their calling and their purpose. They all, to be, they all had to be processed before they could say, here I am, I am ready to serve. The process began with God revealing himself. And you can also kind of like on your own, without me delving into it, you can remember the process for each of these people that we mentioned. It was about God revealing himself to them, working in the heart and soul of the person. There is repentance that must take place and cleansing when, God work, when God's work is going to be done. Why is this? 2 Corinthians 7, 1, and this is one of the many verses. Therefore, since we have, we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. We can't take, in other words, we cannot take a task or a purpose with the Lord, without the Lord transforming some things because we, we have a fallen nature and we tend to do some things that we should not. That's something that's just wrong. As the Lord transforms the heart and soul, he sees fit to put a task, to confide a calling in our hands that we may complete with excellence. And even then, sometimes we may fall and, you know, um, sin at some point. The prophet Isaiah has this, this vision right after King Uzziah dies. 
The connection might be that the death of the king was a tragic one, and maybe Isaiah might have been mourning the loss of the king. And you could read about King Uzziah. He was actually a very good king, but something he did, which we might find in our own human perspective, possibly unfair, but you know what? This is why we have to know God and why God um, allowed him to you know, contract this leprosy because he was turning on incense in the temple and the Lord got very angry and you know this, this illness came over him. But he was actually a very good king and you know God has his reasons and when God says do not do something, let's not do it. His vision, speaking of um, Isaiah, is that he sees God seated on a throne that is high and exalted in the same manner that an earthly king is seen in a throne. He describes the train of God's robe filling the temple, which tells us that he is having this vision in a heavenly temple. Isaiah continues to describe the vision by seeing several seraphim above the Lord that were flying, and they were worshiping the Lord, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Isaiah says that at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. This was due to the powerful voices of the seraphim in their worship. I will tell you that I have learned to understand that what happens in the heavenly realms and that what we read in the Bible is nothing of what we experience on this earth. There's dimensions, and we are here on earth. We were created with a limited understanding, and when we're able to understand further, it's because God has revealed himself to us through the wisdom that he gives us. And this is why the Lord says, if you want wisdom, and if you want understanding, ask me, because I will give you more than what you can fathom. So this experience is very similar to when the glory of God descended on Mount Sinai and the mountain trembled because the glory of God had descended on Mount Sinai. Isaiah is experiencing God's presence and power. God is showing Isaiah heavenly environment and what it looks like in the heavenly realms where God dwells, with the creatures he created that worship him day and night, and those are the angels, different kinds of angels. That might be strange to us, but this is what the scripture says. When Isaiah experiences this vision in his flesh, he's not able to withstand the feelings of his humanness, failing before God. And this is something that we must understand. This is why when we are in our prayer and we desire to go up in levels for God to reveal certain things, it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a, a war. It's, it's, you know, it's warfare because the flesh and everything that, that rises with it and everything that we live in this world has to die because God is holy. He cannot dwell with the sinful nature. Isaiah felt probably that he would pass out and die as other, um, other prophets. He became fearful and he realized that being human was falling short before, before God Almighty. Falling short acknowledging that he was not a human person. He could feel in his bones that he was, he was before the Holy One. This is how you can tell who you are versus that holy person. He said... In the verses we read, I am ruined because I am a man of unclean lips and live among people who have unclean lips. Words reveal what is in our hearts. You know, that, that proverb of, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. This is why the heart, we have to work on it because everything that you have in there, if it's joy, if it's peace, if it's bitterness, it will come out of our mouths. So words reveal what is in our hearts, and Isaiah's feelings was that he could not compare after seeing these beings and how they worshipped. 
Mind you, this was not about appearance. This was about being holy for God. And Isaiah knew that he just fell short of that. He then says, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Imagine that Isaiah is experiencing being in the presence of the Lord and he realizes that he falls short, very short, and feels worthless. And is able to see his condition. He was comparing himself. The presence of God and the Holy Spirit will always tell us what areas in our lives are falling short. Scripture says that one of the seraphim flew over to him with a coal in his hand. The, the seraphim had picked up a tongue that carried the coal from the altar. This is very detailed. Why is there a tongue in the altar? I don't know. The Lord knew that, he, that the seraphim had to use it. We know that Isaiah is having this vision in a heavenly temple. I, as I said, I don't know why the tongues would be at an altar. However, the seraphim touched Isaiah's mouth with the coal and said, I have touched your lips. Your guilt has been, take, has been taken away and your sin atoned for. That makes you think that Isaiah might have felt something. Something maybe he had said in the past, something that he realized Ooh, I say things that maybe I shouldn't. Who knows? This was a spiritual repentance and cleansing. This is why I often say to people that we must know God. I will repeat it. I repeat it to myself. Many see know who God is. And how do you do that? Through Scripture. The only way we can know God is through Scripture. We can be the kindest and loving people on earth. However, if we do not know God, we would not be able to please Him and follow His commands, His statutes, and His precepts. Deuteronomy 4.24, our God is a jealous God. Isaiah 42.8, He does not share His glory with anything or anyone. This means that He has standards of His own, that He will not compromise, and that will be the same for His creation. To know scripture is to know everything Jehovah God stands for. Isaiah then says, he hears the voice, the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? And I find this, who will go before us? I find this very interesting because the Lord takes Isaiah into this process so that Isaiah can realize something is up. I am showing you this vision because there's things that need to be done. And let's see if you will say, here I am. And of course, uh, Isaiah has been touched by the Almighty. You know, he's been cleansed completely so he can hear and he can understand what is in the heart of God. God is looking for someone to work in the world on his behalf. God is all-knowing, yet he uses people to do his work. Because sometimes people ask, well, why does he want me in? God, you know, all of, we, we question all of these things. We know that He is all knowing, He's omnipotent, He's omniscient. Who better than other human beings that will understand another human being? There must have been a very important job that God is asking Isaiah Who will I send? Who would be willing to take on this task? Who will go before us? God is saying. God is speaking in the third person. So the Trinity is saying, who is going to go? Because God says, who will go before us? Before us is Father, God, Son. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Isaiah responds, here I am, send me. He didn't have a choice, really, after all of that revelation. And I believe he was really ready. This is the calling of Isaiah to be a prophet. Why it's coming uh, six chapters after, um, I'm not really sure. I haven't read, but it could be because maybe Isaiah had to see some things and experience some things in the, in, in the people of God in Jerusalem and Judah before he could really understand what his calling, what God was calling him to do. 
So here, God is calling him to be a prophet. Isaiah experienced repentance and cleansing before he could understand that God was looking for someone to send as a prophet to his people. Isaiah responded, here I am, send me, because he was ready. What would have happened if Isaiah did not have the encounter he had with the Almighty God? Would he have made the same decision to be a prophet to the people of Israel? Maybe, maybe not. I, I honestly don't know. Before God calls us, he prepares our heart. He brings us into alignment with his standards through transformation. And when we are ready, God will touch our heart and we shall be ready to say, I will go. Beloved sisters and brothers, there is so much to do in this world. We know that. We are heading into seasons where the world will need an Isaiah, a Moses, a Deborah, if you know Deborah's um, story. Deborah was a judge, and I'm telling you, I love to read about Deborah and how she had to take the command because the captain was afraid. And she said, well, you're not going to get the glory. If I go, you will not get the glory. That's exactly it. So there will be Deborahs and there will be Moses, people that represent these, these um, characters of the Bible, these people. And God will call you in the capacity that the Lord has given you and the gifts that God has activated in you. And all you would have to say is, here I am. He will call you to your community. He will call you to this world. He will put in your heart what your purpose will be. And before a purpose, there's a calling. The purpose will pave the way. So, amen. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the spirit of surrender. May we be willing to be your hands, feet, and voice. Help us, Lord, to reply, here I am, Lord. Send me with full and a generous, send us with full and generous hearts, knowing that we are your instruments in building your kingdom. In the name of Christ, amen. So let us proceed to read, um, to sing, the hymn, Here I Am, Lord, number 593.
Creator God, that you might use this offering and the giver for the building up of your kingdom and the glory of your name. Amen. So we will take some time to share our joys and concerns.
surprise, huh? Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and my dad's still, he's still doing all his on his third round of chemo, and his, he's didn't really have any side effects this week, and they just messed up his arm royally. I don't know what they did to it, but it's like all red and swollen. And so, so other than that, he's pretty good. Oh. So, oh. yeah, but the approach continued because they seem to be working. Amen. They do work. They're very effective. Going once, twice? Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for, for allowing us to be able to share our joys, Lord. Um, families, children that come and stay, those that are coming to stay, and those that have returned, Lord, bring everyone safely back, Lord. I imagine Chelsea's already home, Lord. But we thank you for her visit for four days with her parents, as I know that, that brings them a lot of joy. Um, we thank you for that. We thank you for just family, Lord, being able to enjoy. Not everyone has their family, Lord. So we thank you for that. We thank you for all of your provisions. We thank you for, you know, just waking up today and being able to breathe and being healthy, Lord. So we also want to pray for those that are not so healthy, Lord. We continue to pray for Ida, Bob, Alexander's father. Um, I think Debbie's sister, I'm not sure, for, you know, um, for you to continue, Lord, to give them strength in their bodies, Lord, and that the treatments that they're receiving, Lord, um, can be very effective, Lord, and that they can also feel peace, Lord, as they work on their, you know, having peace in their mind, peace in their hearts, Lord, and continue aging, because that's something that's not, it's, it's not, we can't avoid that, Lord, but that you can give us that joy, um, give them the joy, Lord, of knowing that you are with them in all of their, you know, their illnesses and all of their situations, Lord, um, specifically for Aida and Bob, Lord, so... They're, they're in your hands, Lord, that you continue with them, that your Holy Spirit comforts everyone that is sick right now, Lord. And we continue to pray, Lord, and nudge our hearts, Lord, and our spirit when someone is suffering, that, that we can take two minutes to pray for them, Lord. Um, we also want to pray for, um, I feel like I'm praying, our veterans, Lord. Our veterans, you know, we celebrate tomorrow, um, Memorial Day for all those that fought you, Lord, and not because they're already gone, there's nothing that we can do for them, but the families that remain, those that um, have been affected, Lord, with PTSD, with so many things, you know, missing parts in the body, Lord, those that are fighting in Ukraine, the wars everywhere in this world where, you know, soldiers um, sometimes don't have a choice but to fight for their country, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that you are with them, Lord. There are some Christian men and women. There are people that fear you, Lord, that love you. Please be with them, Lord. Um, give them peace, Lord. Give them joy in the middle of their, you know, of their fighting against enemies, Lord. Um, be peace for the families that know that they may lose their loved ones in these wars, Lord. Um, and even if sometimes we feel like you're not in control, Lord, you're always in control. And your word tells us that these things are going to happen. But you are still God and you're sovereign, Lord. Um, we also want to pray for this situation with COVID, the, the elderly who are in nursing homes who, you know, feel very isolated from their families, from, from you know, the blessing of having someone like Patches visit them, Lord. Um, we pray, since you're so powerful, just end the whole ordeal, Lord. And so that they can have the joy of having their loved one come, their, come and visit their family, you know. And also, um, I'm pretty sure that Patches is not the only pet that comes to visit, Lord, but that they can feel that joy of having, you know, a, a pet come over and, and give them joy, Lord. So we pray all these things in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us sing our um, last hymn. 
Um, actually, we're missing the Lord's Prayer. Sorry about that. Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So let us sing the hymn, Stand Up and Bless the Lord.